Welcome inside the crazy ant farm, man. How are you? I, I am crushing life. I'm living the dream. Yes. And I'm doing this show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's I, what we love to hear, man. Living the dream. That's what we're doing every day, too. So we love it. You know, there you go. Yeah. I mean, well, if, if this is heaven, yeah, we're here. <laughs> that's I've it. Arrived. That's it. Fantastic. Right. Well, dude, we are super pumped to talk to you tonight. Obviously, uh, all kinds of listeners. Anytime we say anything from the MCU, they're all like, ah, you know, they're she everywhere. Yeah. And you're like right there. I mean, episode one, just like boom, there you go, boom. right? So yeah, love that. We're super excited to talk about that. And yeah. I mean, you've been in a ton of stuff of, that I watched over the years, man. I was start, I was looking over the resume, and I'm looking at all the appearances, and I'm like, damn, this guy's been in everything I've watched. <laughs> And yet like, no one knows him. <laughs> that's the best part. Right, exactly. You're you're like our second guest to say that. Sometimes that's a good thing that nobody knows you, right? It's kind of like up and yeah. down. Like, so that's awesome. I can go to the grocery store. I mean, it's perfect. <laughs> that's exactly that. perfect. it. Well, what we it. like to do to kind of start off is just give an introduction to the fans who might not be familiar with you and everything. So tell Great. us, man, how'd you get started? Did Was acting something you always kind of knew you wanted to do or did you kind of fall into it? What, what's the path, bro? All right, let's get the spark notes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right now. Right That's right. <laughs> no one really cares, but let's act as if they do. So, um, nah, you know what? My uh, and and then the podcast became bad. Uh, the, no, um, yeah. So, single mom taking care of me, and she had a, a background and degree in musical theater, and um, so yeah, anytime she was doing a play or a musical, I was right there. So from age of five, uh, musical theater. That was my start. And then um, totally quit uh, around right. high school. Major panic attacks, started freaking out. I don't know what happened, guys. We can talk about that another time. No. <laughs> but uh, I, I just was like, I don't think I can get on a stage. I'm panicking. Um, and then um, I, I was good at tennis. Uh, I, I'm, a, um, I'm very aggressive in whatever kind of training I do. Mm -hmm. And even though I, I like to do comedy, stuff like that, but the training is really important. So I started training in tennis because I didn't have acting anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I quit that and uh, I got a college scholarship. Uh, I turned um, pro. And when I say turn pro, let me be transparent. I played some minor league events, uh, didn't do all that well. And, um, but I was also certified as an instructor. So I started training high performance athletes taught a, a, uh, an actor from Dawson's Creek. Okay. If you remember that show, I do. Um, yep. they were at the tennis club I was working at and they were like, uh, talking about acting. They were like, Oh, you know, you're kind of funny and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was like, I would love to get back in acting, but the theater rehearsals and I'm just freaking out. I'm panicking all the time. And they were like, TV and film. You can make mistakes. <laughs> you can make mistakes. And I was like, I'll think about that. And then, um, I couldn't stop thinking about it anymore. And, and there you go. And, and I, my Vampire Diaries was the very first TV show I ever booked. And then my big scene in the teaser of episode, f I think it was like four of season one. We didn't know what, what it was when it right. came out in 2009. And then it got cut. So don't have like a, a, a viewing party right. for yourself. <laughs> but your you got paid. So, you know, it's all about oh, right? yeah. it. I mean, I got paid. Yeah, yeah, sure. so but anyway, right. and, and then and then I didn't book again for like five more years mm -hmm. and decided I needed um, here I am back to training. I went I decided I needed a different practical approach to acting and, mm -hmm. and get away from some of the. Well, this sounds bad to, to say I got away from some of the the artistry of it uh -huh. is um, I had to start understanding show business. I've, I've mm. never left the artistry for sure. But um, I had to start working with a gentleman who was working. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and uh, and he was like, brother, you, you do not understand this. You're thinking like an artist. You right. need to start thinking like a working actor and um, trained with him a couple of years and then ABC's Nashville. I, I got a booking on there. And from then on, I've been really lucky enough to book a, a, a few legit projects every year since. Mm, that's funny because we literally just had a guest on the show um, 
last night actually. Um, but he was talking about you know you actually need to figure out the the process of you know the behind the scenes stuff and contracts yeah. and like yeah. finding the right agents and managers and publicists and all the stuff on top of you're in front of the camera yeah. on stage stuff, <laughs> which I know not a lot of people think about when they're like, oh, I would just want to see my name up in lights, yeah. like you yeah. know, like sure. all the things. They forget the business part of show yeah. business because it is it's a business and it's not just the artistry. You got to know how to handle the business side of it too, or otherwise it you're can get so really right. tricky man you're so right i went to a I did a table read yeah i, I booked a faith-based project as a lead yo let's just start with that yeah, yeah. for sure <laughs> <laughs> so it never went anywhere and uh but i went to a table read and this actor came up to me and he goes um after the read he was like man you got your ass kicked wow i'm so sorry buddy and I was like, what? Right? I like, did? <laughs> what? <laughs> and I got, and, um, and he was like, hey, what he really said, he truthfully pulled me aside and he said, please don't fuck this up for the rest of us. And I had no under, that was where, like, what? Right. Yeah. You're like. And, um, you know, uh, and I had never had that kind of pressure on like this very low budget thing before. And I was like, oh my God gosh i reached out to the director and he was like yeah your table read you were you were playing at it you weren't you were faking all these things like why didn't you just read it uh, honestly or why didn't you do those things and i was like i didn't know right (laughs) i thought you were and he was like yeah we all got a little concerned uh yeah i mean uh, that's interesting and from that moment i was like um Okay, I'm never getting embarrassed like that again. I don't care right. how many acting classes I will get in. I uh, put up my own money to produce uh, uh, my own film one mm-hmm. time. And being a producer, oh, yeah. I realized, oh my, that was the greatest. See, I didn't go to film school, but but that was the greatest thing I could have ever done was get my wife's permission <laughs> to, to take to take thousands of dollars and put it into something and then watch other people not care about that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and look, and this was like, this was like crazy low independent stuff. It was sure. called the Arbors and it was such a fun learning experience. I mean, it was, it was great for our first time, but you got your first time making a feature. I didn't want to start with a short. Right. Right. Anyway, and just from renting cameras and lenses, and then I dealt with this actor, and he was like, "I have to go call my coach. I, I don't think I can do the scene. I'm all spent." And I was like, and I realized, like the the line producer's like, uh, "We have to return the lens." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want to perform tonight, and the sun is setting. And I was like, "What the, what the hell have I been learning?" And yeah. that's when I, you know, I was like, "I've got to train way differently." And, um, and, and, you know, we all grew from that. Like that actor graciously was like, oh, I guess that wasn't like what I should have done, you mm-hmm. know? And we were like, Hey, because a lot of times, uh, you know, this is a totally different story, but a lot of the training that I experienced, um, they were training you to be the 1%, like the yeah. one, the 1% that has the lead and has a year to prepare and you do all these things. Well, Little Drew over here offended <laughs> every acting teacher on the planet because I had trained with tennis. There's a metric to that. Like if you hit the ball into the net, you know, like we all know it did it hit the net. Right. right? It's not up right. for debate. Like, well, I think his stroke was it meant something to me. All right. Like right. It was like, no, he hit the net. Like you yeah. lost the point. Done. Move on. And um, and as a coach in tennis. If you hire me as a coach, guess what I'm supposed to do? Make you good. Mm -hmm. You don't need my approval as a tennis player. I actually have to turn a profit on this. Mm -hmm. Like, and if you don't win that tournament that you've hired me to do, I'm fired. Yeah. So when I would go into these acting places and I would say like, so what? I didn't really hear you give any feedback on how they could improve that. I know you didn't like the performance, but was there a different technique they could have used? And, and they were like, you're going to be a lot of trouble. Because <laughs> education in most acting classes, it, it's, very, it's really improving now. But, yeah. But to not have that respect for the other 99.9% of people working on a project, I thought was, was ludicrous. I thought that was mm. diff. I mean, I just couldn't believe that. So, um, 
So anyway, once I started learning how, well, what's a screenwriter dealing with? And right, like, how, right. How do you get this pitched? And now when he says, we're doing this, it would surely make sense for me to start learning what kinds of lenses they're using. And when they're like, we're probably going to digitally push in on this, Drew. So right. just know that. They don't teach you that with Shakespeare. <laughs> no, no. Hell no. So no. I was like, they're going to they're gonna digitally push in. So guess what? I better give a nice performance that allows them to yeah. have room to do that. Right. And still let it be free and let it be fun. But also, I want to be on I want to be on your team. Like, let's knock this out. Hell yeah. And um, so I love that that teamwork concept. That was the you know, that was a beautiful thing about theater that I just didn't have the, the guts to get over. But um, I could now I can do it now. But, yeah. But anyway, um, but uh, but yeah, just the, the whole team concept sure. uh, i love that about filmmaking and and being on whatever well yeah and you thing. know i think a lot of people too think okay i've got talent so that's all i need and you know mm -hmm. acting is a skill you can have all the talent in the world but it's a skill and at skill you get better the more you perform it the more you do it the more you learn the more you're yeah. coached and I, yeah. I think there's not enough people that are coming into the industry like you said that that are educated in the fact that hey yeah you're a really talented guy but there's a lot that you need to learn to make that work and and so to yeah. have you say that you know because this show is geared towards the up-and-comers and people that are trying to get into the yeah. industry and stuff like that so to hear Hear that and know, hey, I okay, I've got the talent thing, but boy, I need to figure out all the rest of that stuff. That's good. That's the kind of advice they need. That's the kind of stuff they need to hear. Well, you know what? We, so I own my own acting studio, and and our whole thing is a training facility, right? Is what I mean, not a film production. Yeah, yeah. But um, <clears throat> you know, our mo our little slogan is "Learn to act, then learn to work," mm. and I think they're. And I think they're both, um, we're, we're kind of missing some of those parts. And it's funny, some of the university students, when they graduate, they will come to then learn how to make income at this because it's a different set of skills. It is. And, um, and when I started working, um, I remember Paul Giamatti uh, kind of oversaw Lodge 49 and I had two seasons on that show. And, mm -hmm. and I had to, got to do a scene with him and... Um, basically uh let me not say that he made mistakes i don't <laughs> want to say that. but i heard him talk to another person about making mistakes mm -hmm. and he said i make i make uh, many mistakes i just recover faster so i just don't stall production right right and no one's going to care if you mess up as long as you don't devalue everybody else's time i thought that was brilliant oh yeah like Okay, I'm gonna forget my line, but don't let me spend 20 minutes like coming up with excuses. Just call for it, stay in it. Let's call it. Let's move it. Yep. And I have seen so many crews. When I say crews, I mean like uh, crew members. Those wonderful people that help us uh, have our dreams come true. I mean, well, I've seen them a size of relief on their face when they realize we might wrap on time and they can get home to their families. Yep. They can do what they want to do. They've got their own life. And uh, I feel like um, I love the pressure of like working on the clock. Oh, you sure. tell me, let me tell you where I'm going to rise to the occasion. You tell me, Drew. All right. We were, we're about to go into overtime. We don't want to do that. Now uh, we need to knock this out and you're going to get three takes. That's probably all we can do. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. I don't know why my my brain will get hyper focused on things like that. So uh, well, yeah, that's why I, I love miss that. That's why I, I miss it. film, bro. Like I'm old yeah. school. I I like the idea that you are oh, limited. Like real film. Yeah, real yeah, film. Yeah, 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 it's like you've only got so many takes. We can't do seventy of them because we're you burning through. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so the pressure there to like to get it done because you know, yes. right? Yeah, man. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm a fan of digital. Okay, I'll just say that I'm a fan. No, of No, I get it. I I get it, and I and I get that we evolve with the time, but also we could maximize our performance time by being fully prepared when we arrive. Yep, exactly. Um, even no matter what we're shooting, I think, you know, that could also give us room for more options, mm -hmm. uh, better choices for the editor, which then yep. makes us all look 
better. Like we're all winning. (laughs) Exactly. I think that's like something special to take away from sports, I guess, because like you were talking about that team aspect and be able to respect Mm. each other and respect each person's job. And you know, if you run a Y route, you make sure to fucking block this guy to make sure that guy's wide open. You you. know, know, I'm just saying like, it's just, it's very important to respect other people's craft while all working together. And I think that's something, a very important important lesson for the up and comers to learn before you know stepping on set for their first time and to try to learn as much as possible from everyone have a conversation with everyone and not think you're better than anyone else because (laughs) you're not you're not at all um because like you said there's that one percent that'll make it up here but everybody else they're loving life down here and like easy breezy living squeezy the rocking and rolling well and i like that you brought up crew right that you were gonna rap on time because you know the majority the vast majority of crew members are project to project to project you go over they're screwed on that next project they were supposed to be at right and like i always think of independent contractors yeah that's yeah a wink and it's such an inconvenience to then have for sure uh, think of all the time spent from crew members or contractors or anyone self-employed or you know and they're now having to like uh, rearrange and then it's a domino effect. Yeah. And so um, I do, I mean, there's been a couple of times where we've done some projects and and I was like, we, I think we rushed through that without right. anybody feeling yeah. confident mm-hmm. about it. Right. But then there's been some times where I was like, I really am wondering like, what, ooh, yeah. what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Oh man! Well, anyway. we got to talk about the biggie because you, you know she, she Hulk what? MCU, right? You're like <laughs> in there. You're coming right out of the gate. Your coming character, gate. absolutely hilarious. By the way, <laughs> I mean, I, it was it was fantastic. And you know, we Thanks. were talking about this. We've had a lot of guests that are in the MCU and and have been a part of it and everything. We always like to yeah. tease. You know, once in. You don't know. You're you're, you're there. You, I mean, they have this thing so laid out, so planned. You might be in like three episodes, and then five years from now, you go, "Remember that guy? Well, this was d- deliberately this way because now he's here." It's so and it's so like yeah. you know crazy. And um, yeah, I gotta ask because another guest that we talked yeah. to said that when he got on set, he had to get like in the back of this, this semi with all these cameras, and they do this like three sixty. Yeah. Like, d- did you have to do that? Like, did they do that to you too? Yeah. Oh, gosh, <laughs> I wish I could. Sh- Man, I know I'm <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Foggy's pulling up to your That's house right. right now. No, I literally was like, I gotta like, yeah. Okay, where's the photo? Because I, I remember getting that photo because I was like, I have got to show. Let's see, how many years ago did I shoot She Hulk? <laughs> um, no, if I can find it, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah, for um, sure. I'll email it to you because it was so cool. Um, and just being like, what in the world? Right? Like, what is, is happening? I can't imagine yeah. that experience. So, okay, so we had, um, well, I don't want to be redundant. Right. No, no, no. no yeah. So we're um, here for your story. <laughs> <laughs> Should well, we start with the fact that I didn't know what I was about to do? Yes. Yeah, right? Exactly. Like, uh, that's the next thing about MCU, right? You don't even know it's a Marvel project. You're just like so brought I, in. I, yeah, my agent sent me an audition for an untitled TV show. And... um I think there was a comic book reference and a breakdown, but okay. by yeah. no means did it say like what it was. Right. right. And it was just uh, the, the breakdown said, um, Harvard asshole. <laughs> Describes the character perfectly. I was like, no acting required. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh my gosh. Um, but ask my wife. No, uh, <laughs> she, uh, no, and so, um, so I, uh, yeah. And it was, two little scenes and um none of those scenes were a part of the project they they were right but upon viewing it right they did not make the cut so we must have shot like 30 to 40 percent extra stuff oh shit that that is not in it yeah and um maybe that's how it goes um yeah yeah um did you get dummy a, sides when you auditioned? Did they keep it also secret, like the sides that you one got for was, the audition? Yeah. yeah, one was dummy, and and one actually was in the pilot. Oh, okay. Um, but it just didn't make the cut. So right. Maybe they knew that ahead of time. <laughs> maybe. We filmed it. We yeah. filmed it. Yeah. But um, but it didn't um, it didn't make it. So yeah, I'm reading for the thing, and I was like, this is kind of funny, and 
um, I was like, oh, this dude mansplains everything. So, okay, <laughs> cool. And uh, my wife came in and read the audition with me. And, um, but the next day she said, I think you could have done better. I don't think that was a good one that you sent in. You should go and um, get your, you should hold off on sending that in. Cause sometimes yeah. I, I, I like to record early. Mm -hmm. There's a whole algorithm for that. I don't want to like, <laughs> no, no that's, that algorithm, but I like to, I, I've noticed that sometimes I can, I can everybody's going to disagree on this, but in the, the data that I've seen from the location that I live and the, the contacts that I have. So this could just be proximity based data, but it's almost like turning in an audition early, a B plus actor turning in a performance early, especially for episodic because you got deadlines. Right. Could sometimes get picked more than an A plus actor turning it in right on like a mm. few hours before it's due. Um, yeah, that's so the data suggests, right? The data suggests, I'm yeah. not saying it's true. That's very uh, interesting. But it suggests that there is, um, we kept the track record of the last like three or 4,000 auditions at our studio from actors. And so it seemed like the people that turned it in within 12 to 32 hours mm -hmm. of getting the audition had like a 30% chance increase of mm, getting, wow, of getting a callback. That does not translate to booking, right? But right getting right. somebody to say, like, hey, I saw that. And um, yeah, so my wife was, so I sometimes I tape early and then I'll kind of sit on it and think on it just for overnight, just to make sure I didn't do something in desperation or out of the moment. For sure. Just, yeah, you know. And then um, she was like, yeah, you, I don't think that was your best. You got to do it again. And I was like, really? Oh, man. Um, she was right. I went back and redid it and found some funnier elements because I had already done it. Right, right, I already right, made right. the first pancake, the, the iron, the skillet was hot. We kind of knew how to exactly, play together. that's right. And um, yeah, and that was when I turned in and then they were like, uh, the, the casting director said, that was cool. We want you to read for another role. And uh, which ended up being uh, Donnie Blaze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I read for the magician on that. And they said they wanted to see my range uh, doing stuff like that. And then they got me to do like a, a little uh, director session. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet with our director, Kat. And so she let me do some other scenes and then kind of kept coaching me on that. And there was a panel of people watching. Wow. I don't know oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then um, I think I had to do one more time to get network approval. Nice. And um, yeah, we did that by Zoom because this was like still in the heart sure. of uh, the pandemic. So uh, interesting doing like network testing or approval uh, through Zoom like that. Can imagine. And, um, yeah, and they wanted me to do the scenes, and then let's try somewhere you just go off the cuff. Let's see how good your improv skills. Let's uh, let's banter back and forth, and let's do this. Now try this, and hey, what if they say this? Get your off camera reader to say this in the audition, and see what your what do you think Dennis right. Mikowski would say? And um, I love improv, and and I love writing and and uh, joke writing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So so I felt at home in that. That was where I was like, yes, this is fun. And um, I think about a, a month later, they confirmed. And then, yeah, in April, I was – April or May, I, I started filming. That's well, epic. I love that you said that about the improv and, you know, hey, let's read this and see how you would react. Like, what would he do? Because one of my favorite scenes is when, you know, Jen is just on the stand and she is just putting you into place. And, mm -hmm. and that look on his face, like, is that really me? Is that like – without saying a word, the look on his face is just like yeah. – <laughs> Damn! I, whoa, that me and you kind of see a little bit of like regret or remorse right there, yeah. and then he just pops back to him. Like, you know, it's yeah. just like, but that was brilliant because to, to be able to pull that off without saying anything, just the, sure. the a range of emotion is brilliant. So well done Aww. on that. It's one of my favorite hey, scenes you. when he's just kind of <laughs> oh, like I... sinking down, like, damn, she's just ripping me, and like, is that really? I loved that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. I, what was really great about being on set was that they let us do, let's do some takes. Let's honor the writer. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's honor Jessica's writing. And um, let's get some, some safeties. And then let's play. Nice. Do you have an idea? Let's share. Right. So they actually had a lot of time uh, budgeted in the week for us to goof around. Nice. In a very positive 
nurturing way when I say goof around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's very interesting. So that was really too. cool. Yeah, because I mean, thinking about, you know, it being such a high profile show, a high profile project, you know, you always think about it's supposed to be A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like, you know, yeah. straight line, cut to the chase, like all this good stuff. To be, But to be able to have, you know, that availability and that flexibility to be able to show your muscles a little bit and show what you can do. And I think that's really cool and that's really special. And you always want to hear the best from the best franchise that's out right now. So that's awesome to hear. It was honestly, it sounds so trite or like I got paid to say this, but um, it was the most fun I've ever had. If I was like, oh, and let me tell you this, if that had been my first booking and I hadn't been sleeping on, you know, Joshua Hooks's futon in his right. studio apartment <laughs> in Los Angeles. And, you know, if I hadn't been doing that and working at a temp agency and all those other things, if that was my first job and you would ask me about it and I, it, it, you know, the information I would give you would be a 100% accurate and truthful and it wouldn't have been further from the truth of what, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If that had been my first job, I mean, you know, I remember one of the, you know, um, Ginger who plays Nikki on the show, she was like, Hey, what are some of your favorite songs? Let's have it played for us when we come on set. Or, you know, and you're just like, what? You're asking what? for a yeah. playlist? Yeah. You, you know, the, the hair and makeup person is like making, you know, your own personal latte for you. Cause they want you to feel comfortable. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, they were like, we like this razor drew. So we're going to give it to you. So you yeah. can always trim your beard by yourself at home. You don't need it. I mean, the, and the yeah. gifts and like the, the spread of food and it yeah. was just, it was a, a decadent experience. And so there was a little imposter syndrome happening and, and you know, where I was like, I, am I, what am I doing? Right? Like, what's happening right Is now? Is this a Marvel thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, a serious question here. I, and by the way, you're not the only one. Like, all of the people that we've had on on these from these MCU projects concur with that. It's like a great experience. It's happy. Yeah. They're very giving and very... But my... We... Does everyone have to sign an NDA? Do you guys have to sign NDAs also? Like, you can't spit... Like, is that a, just a thing? Anybody that's on this show, NDA, you can't say a word. I think... I don't remember how many pages the <laughs> stuff was that we had to sign. Yeah, but when shit. I say we were in like 60 or 70 pages. Wow. wow. In my trailer before I could, you know, get on set. It was an exorbitant amount of pages. <laughs> it was a ple- a yeah. plethora of pages. Damn. Um, and, and that was one of the things that I'm so scared about. You know, I mean, the threat on set is if you leak anything or we see your phone or something. But let's not kid ourselves. The series regulars were like snapping selfies. Right. Yeah, yeah, like, you're right, right. right. Exactly. And they were just like, we're not going to leak them. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just so threatened of a, any kind of lawsuit. Right. I didn't, I didn't put it on my resume. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't really know what I was allowed <laughs> to talk about. And yeah. then I was still like, they were like, oh, you can talk about stuff that's already happened, Drew. And I was like, oh, okay. So I guess I'm not. <laughs> okay. I can't tell you like anything else I know. I can only speak past tense. Yes, right. Yes. Exactly. I love that, though. It's mm-hmm. awesome to hear that it was a good experience for you because that's all you mm-hmm. really ever want. You know, you love the craft. You love what you do. Yeah. And you just want to be excited to go to work every day. That's really all yes. we're looking for, you know? That's awesome. It was, it was so good. I, I wasn't used to that much um, blue screen. Yeah. And um and uh green screen. Uh and I wasn't used to that many cameras. Mm-hmm. I um because of the it's, it's not stop, is it stop motion? What do you call it? With they like, got the uh, whole CGI with the with the ping pong the balls and ping all that. Yeah. Balls yeah. Track suit. <laughs> yeah. So I mean and it, I would just it looked like the hundreds of DSLRs um they're just like they're tracking stuff. It does, they're not filming the show with the DSLR obviously. Right. But, right. But like just all these it must have been 16 to 20 cameras in every setup. Just wow. For, just and, for the motion capture. Your, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, of course we had our uh, Alexa or whatever. You yeah. Know, right. Uh, the, the Ari or the Ari or whatever you say. But, um, you know, all obviously those were there. But, um, but yeah, every time you would finish a scene, they would shuttle you to another uh, lot, another warehouse on the lot. Then you would go and stand in front of a specific camera that was curtained off, mm-hmm. and you had to stand 
<laughs> your arms out and as if you were running. Yes. You had to do these things, right? <laughs> and so they would, and then the back of you and and in the outfit that uh, you were in the wardrobe that you were wearing. And then, um, yeah, then they took us to the, the 360 yeah. um, trailer. And so you had to, you had to get it in case, um, uh, I guess the CGI is there and they want you there, but you can't, they can just alter your image. Right. To which one actor on set was like, how does the union feel about you duplicating my image? <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, without me act Cause if, and he, and he legit, I never saw him again, but he legit <laughs> said <laughs> was one day I was there and we were all getting our scans and he was saying like, um, like, is that, is that kosher that, um, you could write me into a scene and I'm not technically be there. How will I know? How will I get compensated? Right. And, uh, we were like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only Feige knows where that guy is now, right? Exactly. I was like, yeah. I, and that's when the podcast turned back. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> that's funny as shit. I love that man. That's so funny. For all you Yellowstone fans out there, he went to the train station. That's right. He, he was taken to the train, to the train station. station. <laughs> Get it. That's fucking right. great, man. But dude, this has been awesome. Uh, one more yeah. thing before you yeah, go. Something else we've been trying on the podcast. It's been very fun. Um, but we want to know, is there an embarrassing story or moment on set or on stage because you said you know you had a little stuff happen on stage that was absolutely traumatizing when you went through it, but now you can sit back and laugh about it. Yes. <laughs> so confident. Without hesitation. Yeah. I had booked House of Cards. Mm. And I was a very insecure uh, actor mm -hmm. who didn't feel like he belonged there and they were shooting two units had an a unit and a b unit yep. on the day and we were at a disclosed location it's somewhere in maryland or you know and i get there to the security gate and the guy says he's like uh, yeah uh, how can i help you and i was like i'm here to film and he was like background and i said no uh principal yeah <laughs> and he was like he goes yeah right <laughs> uh come on this way and and i was like okay um all right yeah whatever and uh and so he was so basically uh he was like uh did you bring your own wardrobe and i was like yeah sure did because it was a last minute booking and they were like we don't have time oh. to fit everybody for suits so I can you bring a suit that you feel good about and we might approve it and compensate you for your suit. Oh, nice. Wow. So okay. I brought my own clothes. But this led to the gentleman believing that I was a background who had brought his own <laughs> hair and makeup. Damn. And so they put me in holding oh. with background and oh. they and I was like, I think I'm supposed to be performing, guys. Yeah, and they right. were like, where's the call sheet? And I was like, they didn't give me one because the second ad just texted me the p dropped pin where i'm supposed to show up right right and i was like so i have this and he was like i don't know who this is so like you're gonna wait here um <laughs> oh my gosh so the first ad calls me and wants to know why why are you late and i got to explain i am here with security <laughs> they do not believe i am on the show <laughs> because i can't tell them a fucking thing <laughs> yeah. about the show. Exactly. <laughs> because I don't know, because I never saw a script. Oh, shit. Oh. I don't know. I was attorney. Right. Something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. He apparently oh knows gosh. more than I do. Right. Exactly. And that was the episode that Robin um, decided to, Robin Wright uh, decided to direct. Oh, she shit. Had, she wanted us. Uh, she was uh, uh, um, getting into doing it more, right? Right. So right. They wanted her to take a small special group for this little car green screen <laughs> shot where we're, we're all in a Cadillac that's really just in a garage and it's right. green screen all around. And like, so it was just four of us. Mm. So she had wanted to do kind of her own thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so jacked up. I was like, I... I don't want to be here anymore. Like right. I don't want to. I don't want to be here today. Anxiety, and man. It 
I had like three sentences and it took every ounce of energy to not throw up. <laughs> oh man. Say three sentences because I was like being, a, I was accused of like right. trying to get on a set and yeah. I literally didn't have any information. Yeah. I wasn't on a list because, oh, it was a private little B unit right. splinter group shooting stuff. Mm. And I've never forgotten that. Uh, no, that's been, a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> of being late. Yeah, yeah exactly. Then, like all these things that, because it sounds like it was a very quick process and you got there and you're like, all right, this, this, this. And then you're like, wait, what the fuck? This is not right? going how I thought it was going to go. Like, no, yeah, I talk I mean, about anxiety. And, and, you know, I just, uh, that was a... <laughs> That was a tough one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, but, you made it Marvel through, man. Look at you now. Yeah. Yeah. Look at exactly. you now. You're exactly. killing it. Listen, man, this has been absolutely amazing. We can't thank Aww. you enough for coming on, bro. Um, really, That's anytime, right. anytime you want to come on, you're welcome back. Um, we do a Great. top five segment every week. Uh, this next week is going to be, you know, top five heroines and of female heroines, like superheroes or yeah. real life. Glad you clarified. And, yeah, yeah no. right. Like, <laughs> wow. And that's when the podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But you made that a callback reference. Yeah, exactly. no, that's all throughout. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it's all about social media now. So, where can people follow you? Yeah, Drew L. Matthews is uh, on Insta. I I can't stand Facebook. Uh, yeah, my mother's <laughs> it's on. It's all Facebook. good. My mom's on Facebook, and I and I can't. I mean, I have a fan page that I don't check like yeah, yeah it's fine, no, it's fine. It's a, it's uh, a, sorry to anyone who's ever tried to message me right uh, exactly people is where it's at it's all good they've been sent like religiously no, following is, yeah instagram is cool and um and then on twitter drew matthews like my middle name is lane so that's what the l is for cool there it is Thanks, man sag. there it is i love it well listen man yeah, take anyway. care i'll be reaching out to you and like i said awesome. anytime you want to come back on more than welcome hell yeah man. <sighs> hopefully i'll have something phenomenal <laughs> oh, I'm, no doubt. It'll be no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys are rock stars. Thanks for having me here. Thank Appreciate you, brother, it, man. Appreciate course. it. Yeah. You have a good night, brother. All right, guys. All Thank right, you. take care. Man, that dude, I just feel like, you know, he's just enjoying the process. Yeah, that dude is clearly, like, loving life. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I just, everything about that conversation, he never stopped smiling. Yeah. It's, that's a guy who is literally, when he says living the dream, you could tell he's living his dream. Literally. And that's awesome, man. I know. So many good stories, and man, I can only imagine the level of anxiety with that whole house of cards shit. Right. I'm just like, <laughs> oh my god, I promise you I'm supposed to yeah, be yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, Why fuck, are man. you late? Yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, man, I'm actually not. Okay? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm being detained yeah. with, with the background, guys. It's like, so yeah. funny. <laughs> so funny. Well, listen, thank you so much, Drew Matthews, for coming on the show. Thank you.